So in this uh, video, there's been a comment from last night, a very, very nice comment, and I wanted to uh, use it to talk about a product. So down here it says from Omar Mundel, Mundel 6387, it was very informative live. Are you familiar with the feature product? I see a lot of people saying it's a great soluble form of iron. So the feature product is what he's asking about. And I'm, I told him I would talk about it today. So he's asking about the feature product. And the feature product, if you're unfamiliar with it, is a 600 iron product by, I think it's Loveland. Um, let me pull it up here. PDF is, yeah, by Loveland. I guess they're in Colorado. Oh, Greeley, Colorado. Yeah. So, so they manufacture this product or distribute this product. I, I assume they're in the manufacturer of a product called Feature 600. And it's a soluble small bag. I think this is a five pound or a three pound bag. So it's a three pound bag that you can, the idea is I think you just put it in a, in a tank and it melts down and you can spray it out. So the question is, what do I think of, do I know about this product and what do I think about it? I am familiar with this product. Um, and, and I'll tell you what I think about it. The <clears throat> forms of elements in this product over here under the guaranteed analysis, as we're all familiar with, and the guarantee analysis is a 600, 1% magnesium, 8% sulfur, 10% iron, and 2.5% ma manganese. I'm just saying, so my, my, my initial comments about this product is, if you're using it, it will probably work if you're applying it at, a, at the specified rate. I mean, there's no reason to believe it won't. It has 6% iron in, or 6% nitrogen in it, and is very likely to result in a turf grass greening. Um, I have good confidence that that'll happen, assuming you apply it at, you know, let's say, you know, 0.1 to 0.3 pounds of nitrogen, you're probably going to see a response. I don't know what this rate ends up being in terms of pounds of in put out, but you, you know, you'll see a response. If you put it out on the leaves in a, in a say 40 gallons per acre or less, say you're using a Z sprayer, or using one of these low, low volume sprayers and it's 20 gallons per acre or something very low and it's sticking on the leaf surface then you're probably going to see a response even less than that with nitrogen because the, the, the iron in here is very likely to, to result in a response, a greening. But I wanted to show this as an example of how formulation games are played. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I worked in a fertilizer manufacturer, I'm sorry, a fertilizer distributor for six, six plus years, did a lot of formulations and worked with manufacturers and customers and all these things, blended I don't know how many thousands of tons of fertilizer I help blend. So there's a, I'm familiar with these processes and there's a certain game that is played with micronutrients. And that is finding a way to elevate the percentage of a, let's just use iron because we're talking about iron, elevate the percent iron up to a level that appears to be, um, or up to a level that would convince somebody that, hey, I really want to have this, like 20% iron or 5% iron. Well, I want 20% iron, right? 10% iron or 5% iron. I want 10% iron. I want a, I want more iron because it's 10% is more than 5%. But there's a certain game that's played to get that percentage up. And that is the, the you know, shell game of using raw materials, the iron raw materials to get that percent up. So what do I mean by that? In here, there are three iron sources, at least three, three iron sources. Okay, iron EDDHA, which we all will become very familiar with over the next several weeks of being a very valuable chelate in terms of its ability to resist oxidation and maintain solubility of its metal over a wide variety of pH. It's very valuable. Iron EDTA, which is useful for soil pHs less than seven. So if your soil pH is less than seven, iron EDTA has the ability to maintain solubility of the iron for, you know, probably, well, I'll show you the, I'll show you the, the length of time. I think it was a week or more. It's possible. And then iron citrate. <clears throat> so there's three forms of iron, EDDHA, EDTA, and iron citrate. But what you don't know is what ratio of these are in here because all it says is 10% iron, 10% chelated iron. So all the iron comes from these three sources. And it says down here, actually, the chelating agents are EDDHA, EDTA, and citric acid. But when you have three of them, 
There's no requirement by law to identify how much, for example, of EDDHA is in that 10%. How much of the iron, the 10% iron, is actually from EDDHA? How much is from citrate? And this is very important because citrate is not a soil chelate, even though it's considered a chelate by APCO. The American Association of Plant Food Control Officials considers it a, a, a chelate, which it may fit the definition of a chelate, but once it hits the soil, it provides no additional solubility beyond the iron sulfate salt alone. And I'm going to show you all those data in the near future. Okay. It's not just me saying this. So how do we figure this out? One, we're not going to be able to figure this out. There's no way to figure out how, how much EDDHA, EDTA, and iron citrate are actually, uh, how much of it is of the 10%, each one of those comprises. There's no way to do this on this label. But we can kind of get a rough idea. We can kind of, you know, get a general concept, general idea. How do we do that? We have to know the percent iron in the raw materials. How do we know that? You can look them up. You can look up each one individually, or you can just go to one of my articles, which is right here, where I've listed all these, which is this, we're going to go over this article in a few weeks. But in this article, I have iron sulfate, iron humate, iron oxide, iron polysaccharide, citrate, glucoheptanate, IDDHA, EDTA, DTPA, and EDDHA. And over here on the right, we have the percentage of iron in the raw material itself. And you'll notice, when I look at these, <clears throat> look at these EDTAs, DTPAs, and EDDHA. Now, EDTA can actually vary a little bit. It can actually be a little bit higher than 10% based upon where you're getting it from. But... As you go up in chelates from EDTA to EDDHA, you're adding more and more carbon, basically. And when you add more carbon, you're diluting the iron. So when it goes from 10% to 6%, that reduction in iron is a result of adding carbon or adding more of the chelating agent to maintain solubility or to resist the influence of pH, soil pH. Okay, so EDDHA is only 6% iron. EDTA is only 10% iron in this particular study. Like I said, you might have slightly higher iron from other sources of EDTA. And then here's citrate at 22% up here, okay? So you have a 22, a 10, and a 6. This feature has a 10% iron in, in it. So we know immediately that it can't all come from EDDHA because EDHA is only 6%, okay? They have to add higher analysis raw materials in here to get that percent up to 10. Okay. Why, where am I going with all this? Why is this important? Because I'm convinced that the majority of chelate, or I should, uh, I should say I'm not convinced that the majority of the chelate in this product is from EDDHA. It's more than likely from EDTA, a combination of EDTA and citrate. Citrate is not a sole chelate. And EDTA is not a soil chelate unless the soil pH is less than 7. I should actually look that up because it might be actually less than that. Let me see if... I want to make sure I'm not fibbing to you because it might be less than 6. Let me see if I wrote that in here. Yeah, EDTA are effective iron chelates on soils less than 7. Okay, so I'm not, I'm make sure I'm straight here. <clears throat> Okay, so if you have one iron product in here that's not a chelate in the soil and another product in here that's not a chelate in the soil on pHs, soil pH is greater than 7, then you're, you really could just get by with iron sulfate, to be frank. Just spray out iron sulfate. You don't have to pay for these expensive chelates. Now, if your pH is less, or I'm sorry, your pH is greater than 7, there's a little bit of EDDHA in here, but I have no idea how much. Because the law doesn't require them to identify how much they put in here. I have no clue. It might be 6% or 5% or 4% or it might be 0.1%. I have, no, I have no idea. Okay. So my comments about this product are, one, it's very likely going to result in a, in a greening response. It's got nitrogen and three forms of iron in it and you're spraying it out. So I have a lot of confidence that you're going to see a good response from a product like this. But I also have pretty good confidence that the iron in here is 
where it, well, although it states it as chelated, and although technically under APCO it is chelated, it would have to remain on the leaf surface in order to have a re- to show a response. You wouldn't want to wash this product into the soil because I don't know how much EDHA is in here. Okay. So if you're spraying this out, spray it out at low volumes, 40 gallons per acre or something like that, so that it stays on the leaf surface and don't wash it into the soil. Because once you wash it into the soil, I don't know, I, I, I have no clue really if the EDDHA is in, in there at a high enough rate to maintain the iron solubility and, the, and in turn reduce, and result in a turf grass greening. I strongly suspect that the majority is from two sources that do not maintain solubility at pH is greater than seven being EDTA and iron citrate. Okay. So what would I recommend? I'm talking about all these things that would, you wouldn't do, or, you know, I wouldn't consider this. I wouldn't use that. What would I recommend? Well, let's go check it out. This is what I would recommend. If we go back to the internet, fair sulfate heptahydrate spray grade is the least expensive option to put out iron on turf grass. You can get this from a variety of locations. This I'm looking here at uh, site one's location. They have it listed for forty six thirty nine a bag, and it's twenty percent nitric iron. So it's there's ten pounds of iron in here, and it's so it's five five dollars a pound, and you put out one pound per acre. So it's five dollars an acre if my math is right so it's not crazy expensive much less expensive than buying it the other way you can also get it and i've used this exact product before it melts down very easily i have i hold no responsibility for someone mixing this incorrectly with something else like phosphorus or like some you know herbicide or any pesticide I, i don't i don't know what will happen when you mix this with all these different combinations so please don't ask me if you put this in water and you melt it down with just this and you spray it out, you will very likely see a response if you're applying between one and five pounds of iron per acre and you will not find at least a less expensive way to do it unless you find a less expensive source of iron sulfate. I mean, you know, spray grade. Don't get soluble. Don't get granular because it'll mess up your screens if, if, you don't, if you get the wrong one. But if you get sprayable or spray grade, that's what will melt down very easily. It's extremely small. It's crystalline. It's tiny, tiny little particles. It'll melt down very easily. And spray it out. Avoid any surfaces that you don't want to turn brown or red. And you're very likely to see a response. Okay, you can also buy the same exact product. Or I'm sorry, the same exact raw material from a different source. This one's only $35.50 a bag. And it says on here, banded or to be can be broadcast, side banded or foliar sprayed. So you want to look for spray grade or foliar grade iron sulfate raw material. But this is like building a house, okay? You're not you can go buy a house that's already built, which is an expensive way to do it, or you can buy the equipment and the tools to build your own house, which is the less expensive way to do it. But you need to have the knowledge of what you're doing in order to do that or you're going to screw something up. Right, you're going to mess up the bathroom. You're going to mess up the foundation if you don't know how to do it. So, if you don't know how to mix raw materials and melt down raw materials, particularly an iron-containing raw material, I don't hold any responsibility for, for people messing it up. Okay, there is value in buying uh, manufactured liquids in that they've already done the chemistry and melted everything down, and they know what fits and what doesn't fit in the liquid and what won't salt out and all these things. There is value in that. If there is any value in buying already previously manufactured liquid liquid iron, it's it's that. It's that they've done the, the the homework for you and done that step for you. But if you want the least expensive way, and all you're going to do is spray out iron, I've done this many many times, and it's very safe. It, I don't have any problems with it. Now I know what I'm doing. But even if you didn't, honestly, this is very easy to do. But I would start by only applying the spray grade iron sulfate. Don't try to mix it with other stuff until you gain some experience with it, okay? So that's what I would recommend. The the feature 600, I'm sure you would have a very similar response with that. I mean, it's a very, seems like a very reasonable product. It's just, it's probably much more expensive than the response that you would see from just buying the sprayable iron sulfate itself and putting it out. 